In fighting the flood of 2011, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers faced not only the unique challenge of engaging across some 2,300 miles of the Missouri River, but also coordinating efforts with a multitude of local, state, regional, and federal agencies, and even sovereign nations. We have 28 tribes throughout the Missouri River Basin, and that also includes tribes that are off the main stem uh, and on tributaries and things like that. But these are large land-based tribes. The better part of them, uh, each tribe's reservation boundary is somewhere around the size of the state of Connecticut. Working with tribal entities presents a unique set of challenges for both the Corps and the tribes themselves. Some of those challenges are as simple as access. And so we're covering a huge amount of territory. Sometimes driving to a, a, a tribe can be a 12 to 20 hour process. Uh, not short distances and, and challenges with weather and everything else that exists there. As far as why we have this position that I currently fill, um, tribes and the federal government have a unique relationship. We have, a, as a federal government, we have a trust responsibility to tribes Therefore, we, ha we have to work with them on a government-to-government -government basis. Of course, core interaction with the tribes is nothing new, but there are hurdles to overcome. It's in very important early on that they understand our authorities. And we address that by taking a trip early, very early this year. I can take it all the way back to last year where we had some work with some tribes that we hadn't really dealt with before. And it's really hard to walk in in the midst of a crisis and start talking about your authorities. In times of emergency, the Corps can assist communities and tribes in protecting vital infrastructure under the PL-8499 program. For instance, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe of North and South Dakota faced a potential crisis early on in this year's flood event. The tribal government, Office for Bureau of Indian Affairs, and Police Department all reside at Fort Yates, an island with only a single road leading in and out. We did. Um make a call to the Corps um, expressing our concerns here in the Fort Yates area because of the one-way traffic in. Uh, they responded back by sending a, a representative down the tribal liaison. The Corps assessed the situation and installed rock along the causeway to protect it. The Corps also installed advanced temporary measures for a few other critical facilities around the island. This to me was a, a first for Standing Rock working so closely with the Corps of Engineers in a, in a common good for protection of our resources and of course our people. However, the Corps cannot provide the tribes with assistance that is not authorized under the PL-8499 program. This played out with the Winnebago tribe, where the Corps could not construct a berm to protect the tribe's casino. A casino is a business and not considered critical infrastructure, like a power plant or a sewage treatment facility. Still, that casino is vital to the tribe's economy, generating revenue typically in the 26 to $27 million range annually. The loss of the casino would deal a serious blow to the tribe in surrounding county. And you're cold, close for 40 days, you, know, you can you can do a little of the math. Um, and that's why it was important for us to open up. Not only to generate some revenue, but, but those 350 good employees that we have, it's to get them back to work. What the Corps could do, though, is provide technical assistance and advise the tribe of what type of temporary levy to construct and to what height. At one point, we realized we probably should, for, as a safety precaution, um, have a berm. And so the Corps of Engineers was instrumental in that. We, we called them in to say, you know, what, what's your advice? What's your consultation? You know, give us some direction here. And they're very helpful in that regard. For the tribe, keeping the casino dry was a great accomplishment. But they didn't stop there. After being closed some 40 days, the tribe figured out a way to open the doors to customers with a sense of adventure. Oh, it's, it's critical to the process, actually. But one of the things that, that we benefit from is, as you know, many of the tribes are not funded appropriately. And so that's caused us to, to be in a mode of trying to think outside the, outside the box. How do we do these things less expensively? And how do we do these things uh, quickly? Because things have, have to happen quickly. So I think that uh, being in that mode has helped us. Looking to the future, the Corps will build upon the successes of tribal relations from this flooding event and continue to educate those entities on how and where the Corps can help. I just think it's, it's important to note that we, we do have a trust relationship with the tribes. It doesn't change how they can apply PL-8499, but certainly we have to recognize, you know, the structure of their government is different than a state, and in some ways it's, I think at times, more personal. You really have to reach out and get to know people. You know, it's not necessarily job to job, it's more person to person. 
To find out more about the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' interactions with tribes, follow us on Facebook and Twitter.